Etched into the marble of the Lincoln Memorial is perhaps our greatest president's pledge to care for those who have borne the battle. But thousands of veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan have been fighting a losing battle with the VA to get care for their injuries. They are convinced they've been left with lung damage, cancer, and other illnesses from months of breathing thick, black, noxious smoke from the garbage pits where the military would torch everything from plastic bottles to body parts. This is to pyramate. This is azithromycin, albuterol sulfate, ipotropium, bromide, which Megan is Megan Kingston's and, days are now a seemingly endless round of medications and chest compressions. Uh, the 31-year-old former Army medic went to Iraq to help save American troops, but the cost of her service may be her own life. She cannot breathe without her oxygen tank. She's gone from running marathons to gasping for air on a walk around the block outside her home in Haymarket. When I start to walk and talk, you notice how I've slowed down and I skip breathe. She suffers from a progressive lung disease called obliterative bronchiolitis. Her doctors say it is terminal. And then one time you just have that moment where you're like, crap, I'm dying, and it's like, man, this is a progressive disease. It's going to kill me eventually, and you're like, man, that sucks. She blames her illness on the massive burn pit next to Camp Liberty in Baghdad, where she lived, worked, and slept for months under a toxic black cloud. Hey. We have a burn pit down here. Almost every base and forward operating position in Iraq and Afghanistan had a burn pit. It was the easiest way to dispose of tons of garbage. Troops and military contractors burned everything in the pits, from broken military vehicles to human waste. I watched that thing change colors. That was purple, it turned green, it turned orange. Kingston and her comrades were sometimes enveloped in soot so thick they could not see their hands in front of their faces. We were living in that every day, breathing it in every day. Every morning we'd be rained black soot on us. Kingston is far from alone. In the last decade, nearly 12,000 vets have asked the VA for help, but it has rejected 80% of the disability claims, despite increasing pressure from veterans groups. Melissa Bryant is a spokeswoman for the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. All we want is for the country to care about us and to take care of our brothers and sisters in arms when we get home. Vets want Congress to force the Pentagon to at least track the troops who are exposed to airborne toxins. Tom Porter is IAVA's legislative director. Service members are not saying that this is wrong that we were exposed to this. What they're saying is, if you're gonna send us to war, then treat us for whatever is wrong with us when we get back. The VA is right now working with the National Academies of Sciences on a new study of the long-term health effects of burn pits. The last report, nearly a decade ago, concluded there was not enough data. These black particles are carbonaceous particles or burn particles in the lung tissue itself from the biopsy. But in his lab on Long Island. This is permanent and severe. A former VA chief of allergy and pulmonology has made the deadly legacy of burn pits his life's work. Dr. Anthony Sema says the science is now clear. This is a lung biopsy from a soldier who was deployed to Iraq in the center. Look at this white spot. This is a crystal. You should not see crystals in the lung. Dr. Sema has found the residue of burn pits in the lungs of troops deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan. We are very clear that these are burn pits are leading to long-term severe consequences. The particles in the lung biopsies match the chemical signature of man-made toxins in Iraq and Afghanistan. You don't need a doctor to tell you you're not supposed to burn your trash and inhale it. 
Megan Kingston had to fight the VA for three years to convince bureaucrats she was permanently disabled because of her service in Iraq. I love my country. And I would defend it any day. She is hoping her legacy will make it easier for other vets, that this is the year the tide turns, the year the VA and the Defense Department track all exposures and treat all victims. I'll keep fighting until the day I can anymore, and I'll continue to fight for those who can't fight for themselves. She is just not sure how much time she has left. In Haymarket, Virginia, Bruce Lashan, WUSA 9. So this is where you come in. Call your member of Congress. Ask them to support the Burn Pits Accountability Act. It's a bill that requires the Pentagon to evaluate service members for toxic exposure during routine medical exams and calls for more data collection. We're going to make it easy for you. We have the number for you to call on our website and look for the digital version of Bruce's story.